Today I have this PlayStation 4 original model that needs an HDMI port replacement. That's what the listing says. And when I look at the port, it does look a bit bent, turned to the side. So I think it has been damaged. Now it's supposed to power on. So the first thing I'm gonna test is to make sure it does power on and then we'll disassemble it and replace that HDMI port. Hopefully there are no ripped traces under the port and it's a nice simple repair because we've had a very long streak of not repairing these consoles and I'd like to get a win here. But first thing I'm gonna do is test it out, plug it in and see if we get, we get a beat. There we go. We got blue light, fan spin. Will it turn white? If it's going to. There we go. Very nice. All right, cool. So white light, I'll power it down and then I'll disassemble it. I'm not, not gonna show that because no one wants to see a teardown of a 10 year old console. So yeah, it's not been opened before. So that's kind of nice, but um, not something that really matters for us. Tear these stickers is always kind of fun since they don't mean anything anyway, right? Okay, now that we got the PlayStation 4 out of its case, really not that bad of a teardown. A lot simpler, straightforward than PlayStation 5, at least doesn't have a thousand screws holding it down. And you can see here the HDMI port that is bent all to heck. So I'm gonna take that off and replace it and hope that we don't have any torn or ripped pads, but won't know until we get it under the microscope. So let's do that. Yeah, so I did go ahead and added leaded solder to the legs. Unfortunately, I did not have my camera recording, which is kind of a bummer. Sorry about that. So. I don't exactly know what this piece right here is, but I'm gonna cover it with some Kapton tape just to keep it. Cause I like to do it from this side. I don't want to melt the plastic and have that smell and stuff go everywhere. So. That. Probably unnecessary, but. Then added flux came in with my hot air station set pretty high for, I think about 450, 440 degrees Celsius and 60% airflow. Fortunately, as always seems to be the case, my smoke detector is right above where I do all my work and it often likes to go off when, especially when doing something that takes a lot of heat and produces a lot of flux fumes, I guess. It wasn't the plastic this time because I'm doing it from the other side. So I don't recommend it, but I just, you know, disconnected it for the time being. I reconnect it when I'm done, but uh, there are other smoke detectors around, so. It's not like I'm disconnecting the whole house. The port came off pretty easy after that and luckily did not have any ripped pads, which always makes for a nice and easy repair. Tidy up these pads. Especially this bridge one right here.
So let's get some solder on here. Okay. I don't think there's really a need to remove the old solder. I think that's fine. Let's see. Yeah, that should do it right there. I decided to try a little different technique that I've seen before. I think I've done it before on a, a switch, but never on an HDMI port where you just, instead of removing the solder and the leg holes with the solder sucker, just heat it up and get them all melted and then drop the port in. It really is a much faster process. And if you have the steady hands to do it, I recommend giving it a shot because it really takes a lot of the time out and a lot of the effort of trying to remove the solder because if you don't remove the solder completely from the leg holes then you're going to end up with a port that's kind of you know crooked a little bit here and there when I dropped the port in it still didn't go flush with the board it seemed to be raised a little bit on the front so I just went along the bottom with the hot air and used my tweezers to squeeze the port and make it flush with the board helps give us a nice secure connection. Not all the pins ended up being um, solid and soldered to the board, so I did run over them all with some extra leaded solder just to make sure we have a good solid connection with everything. You know, HDMI ports really aren't that hard to do if you have the right tool. So I do recommend if you have the right tools and you have this issue, give it a shot. You know, um, if you have a good equipment, your risk of tearing the pads is, I think, pretty low. You're more likely to have a ripped pad from, you know, the port being damaged than from you removing it if you use proper equipment and technique. So um, I do I do recommend you give it a shot and you're not messing with any chips that are fragile the hdmi pins are well exposed so it's easy to get to them and even if you bridge two like i do here it's not too hard to fix that bridge just make sure you add in a lot of flux and come in with your soldering iron and touch it up and it should eventually flow into place i had to kind of like work this solder blob down the robe but all it does is coat the pins as it goes and eventually enough of it's on the pins that there's no more bridge. Okay. And work its way down a little bit. Take time. Be patient. 
Det var ikke vanskeligt af. That looks pretty good. And then if we flip it over, it's not bad. I'm just gonna touch it up a little bit with some leaded solder. this put back together and we'll test it out okay now we see our brand new hdmi port it looks good we'll give it a test obviously not fully put back together but enough that we should hopefully get a picture <gasps> it flashed There we go. Oh, finally, a repair that actually ended up working. So awesome. All right, there we go. We have a working PlayStation 4. It's nice to finally be able to fix one of the devices I've been working on. I've had a long streak of almost fixes, not quite fixes and complete failures. So this has felt really good. Uh, if you're interested in having me try, and I emphasize try, to fix your console, check out the pinned comment down below. Just something I've recently decided to try and offer. It's a kind of a free service. It's not completely free, but you have to pay shipping to and from, but I'm not gonna charge you the labor to try and fix your device. It's just something I wanna do to give back to the community, help fix more consoles and keep them out of the landfill. And I know not everyone has the ability to pay, you know, hundreds of dollars to fix their console if they don't, and if it's an older console, like a PlayStation 2 or 
um, you know, a 3DS or something like that, you're not really going to be able to take it to a shop and pay them to fix it because it's just not worth it for them. But to me, it would be worth it to try and fix it. So um, if it's something you're interested in, just reach out to me at that email address down below, fixmorewastelust at gmail.com, and I'll see if I can try and help. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something useful from it, and uh, we'll catch you in the next one.